uh, continuing our uh, uh, list of old school patterns, um, and this one was in my streamer book, and this is a fly uh, that a lot of people these days can't tie. Um, you know, I'd like to ask all these uh, hot shot Pertagon tires on the interwebs, um, hey, tie me a muddler minnow. Um, let's see how you do with that. Um, this is sort of a tricky little fly, and, and while it's an old fly, man, this fly still works. Um, and, you know, I was not always a believer in this fly. Um, and then several years ago, fishing with my friend Larry, Larry Fredericks on the Arkansas, um, we were fishing streamers and Larry said, do you have a muddler? And I was like, Larry, of course I don't have a muddler. That's, that's from 1920 or something like that. And, uh, uh Larry dug a couple muddlers out of his box and we fished those and man, they did work. Um, so, um, one of the cool things about this fly is it's got sort of, uh, um, cool stacked quill wings that is a, uh, a lost art. So I'll, uh, I'll show you how I go about doing that as well. Um, so what I've got in the vise here is a TMCO 5262. Um, this is a size 4, I think. Um, you know, any streamer hook will work for this. Um, but I'm going to start the thread about a fourth of the way back from the hook eye. And what I'm using here for thread, um, in this case, is 6 aught Uni. This is rusty brown. Um, the color of the thread here doesn't really matter. It's not going to show. Um, I'm going to make a thread base all the way back to the bend so that my thread hangs even with the point on the barb. And that's where I'm going to put the tails in. And what the tails are going to be made out of, um, this is um, Ozark turkey quill. Um, and this is a wing quill. And these are beautiful. These are fairly expensive feathers. Um, but they're just beautiful for, for what we're about to use them for. And I want to cut a slip from the, the right side of the right feather like so, that is about as wide as the gap of the hook. And then I'm going to cut a matching section from the other feather in the set. So this will be from the left side of the left feather. And what I should end up with are two feathers like so, about the same size and shape. I'm going to pair these inside to inside and you can kind of straighten their tips out and get them just exactly even just by maneuvering them in your fingertips like so and then what I want to do is what's called humping those by kind of building some of that curve back in and I want to check it from both sides and just make sure that I've got those exactly the same width I think my one side may be just slightly wider so I'll peel a fiber off Till I end up with something that looks about like that. Okay. Now my thread is hanging here at the bend, and I want this tail to be, oh, you know, the bulk of it to be about a half shank long. That tip is going to curve down. Um, but what I'm going to do, and this is the same way you'd mount a, a wet fly wing, is I'm going to hold those two feathers on top of the hook, and I'm going to make a pinch wrap and come all the way down under the hook and then back up again, and draw this thread wrap down inside my fingertips. And I'll finish another wrap in front of there. And kind of get that anchored down. And what I should end up with, yep, just like that, is a nicely buckled little tail. Okay? Um, so that pinch wrap all happens inside your fingers. And what you're trying to do is collapse all these fibers into one pinch point right there that creates this nice little arched tail. Uh, so from here, I'm going to wrap forward over those buttons. I'm just going to help kind of use those uh, to build bulk for the body. Um, and a mother doesn't always have to be weighted, but I typically do weight mine. So I'll wrap over that to just short of where I started my thread. And then cross hatch back over it. And I'll take some lead wire. And I've got, uh, this is 025 here. And I'm going to make, oh, let's say 10 or 12 turns. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yep, that was exactly the right amount. And I'll break the ends of that lead off. You know, this fly uh, harkens back to the days before beads and cones and things like that. So this fly is just weighted with wire. And again, it doesn't have to be weighted. Um, you can tie it unweighted and have a somewhat buoyant streamer pattern. Um, this fly um, can also be fished dry if you tie it unweighted. It was one of the uh, kind of early hopper patterns. So. A uh, fair bit of history and versatility there. Um, now, I'm going to take some, some uh, flat braid, and in this case it's gold, and I'm going to tie this in 
just alongside that lead and wrap back over it to the bend, right to the base of that tail, and then run my thread back forward to my starting point. And at this point, I'm going to put a nice bead of head cement down all that thread work there. Just kind of let that soak in. So now I'll take my flat braid, sparkle braid would work here as well, and I'm going to start to wrap forward. You can see I'm kind of overlapping the wraps, kind of tapering up to the diameter of the lead, and covering that nice and smooth, just to the end, and then I'll tie that off at the front end there. Now you can put a little flash in this fly, and typically what I'll do, because there's almost always a piece of this tinsel hanging out, is I'll catch it on top of the hook and then fold it back. And I'll trim it just short of the tip of the tail. Um, and if you use your dubbing brush, let me find mine. If you use your dubbing brush and sort of run it up that flash, you can shred that flash, if I can get a hold of it. There it goes. Shred that flash, and you've just got a flashy underwing built in there. All right, now for the actual underwing. Um, the original pattern used squirrel tail. I like to use calf tail, um, and this is a cinnamon-colored calf tail, and this is right from the tip of the, of the tail. This is hair that you um, typically would use, like on a bonefish fly. But I want just a sparse little clump of this. This is a fairly hard hair. And I do want to clean it out, but I don't stack it. I want it a little ragged, like so, um, and a fairly sparse little bunch. Um, and again, about the same length as the flash, about midpoint on the tail. And I'm going to try to tie this in um, just here on this little thread nub that I've got at the front. I'm going to try to leave the front part of the hook bare, uh, for the moment anyway. So I'll tie this down with a nice tight band of thread and get it anchored in place. Make sure it's up there on top and trim those butt ends out, and I can run down over those stubs just to anchor everything in place. Now we do want a relatively smooth base here. We're about to tie the wing in, um, so that little thread head that we've got in place right there is going to be uh, be important that it's smooth. We don't want, don't want it too steep, uh, nor do we want it uh, uh, too lumpy or bumpy. So now for the wing, we're going to do basically the same thing we did for the tail, uh, basically the same move. Um, now I'm going to come in and cut, I like a nice fat wing, um, so it's a little, little wider even than the gap of the hook. So I'm going to cut one slip from one side and one slip from the other side, and again about the same width. Stack those on top of each other. And I did pretty well there. They're both about the same same width. Um, but you can see those are every bit the width of the, of the hook gap. Maybe just even, if I go on that side, just slightly more. Um, so I'm going to take this stack. And I've got one that is clearly shorter than the other. So I'm going to cut the butt in so that they're square. Just so I know, just for reference, where the ends are. Um, so now what I'll do is my thread is hanging at the back of that thread head area there. And I'm going to measure this wing, and I want it to just kind of curve down into the curve of the tail. You can see how those sort of a line there. And I'm going to pinch those in place in that same move. Pinch wrap all the way around down under the hook and back up again. And then I'm going to cinch my bobbin down and tighten this thread down from the top. Sneak another wrap in there. Get that anchored good and tight. And we're doing pretty good. We've got a nice little buckle in that wing. You can see where it's buckled there at the front. Um, those tips are a little ragged on this particular batch of feathers, but not to worry. Uh, let me get a couple more wraps here, and I'll show you the other side. I just don't want anything to come loose when I turn them over. You can see what our other side looks like with that same kind of buckle. And you can sort of mess with the shape of this wing a bit to get that arch in there. Um, I like that nice high arch in the wing. And then we'll trim those butt ends off. Anchor everything down good and tight there, and you can see there's a big thread head in place. And then I'll whip finish 
that rusty brown thread. Now this is a good point to come in and put a shot of head cement on those thread wraps just to lock everything in. And typically I would go through and do all of those bodies, uh, body and wing assembly all at once and then come back and do the, do the heads in a separate, uh, separate sitting or a separate batch. Um, I just find um, it's faster to do that way, but it's also more consistent. You do all the, all the wings, you get all the practice sort of all in a row, um, and then you get all the, uh, uh, all the heads all in a row as well. So now I'm going to come in with some gel spun. Um, this is 100 denier, and this is just white, and again, it doesn't matter uh, because it's not going to show. It doesn't matter what color it is. Um, and I'm going to run that thread, just a thread base, um, from the hook eye back to the front edge of that thread head and back again. And this is where we'll start in with our, our deer hair. Um, get my bigger pair of scissors here. And I'm going to take a clump of natural deer hair. And you want a pretty good size batch. This is a big fly in this case. This is, a, um, I think, a size 4, we said. Um, so I want a pretty good size batch of deer hair. And I want to make sure that I get it cleaned out. This particular chunk of hair has got a lot of underfur in it. Um, so I really want to clean that out and get all that under for out. And then I'll stack this up in my in my hair stack until I get a nice clean stack like so. Take that out of my stacker. And I like to shorten this hair just a bit from that overall finished length, um, just it makes it the, the hair a little easier uh, to work with and manage. So I cut it down just a bit. And what I'm looking for here is I want the, these tips, let me hold it on your side, these tips to come back about midway up the wing. So I'm going to lay this clump of hair in and I'm going to take a turn of thread over it, one there and another one right over the top of it, and then start to crease that hair down and put a third turn in. Now I'm going to hold on to my hook and my wing assembly, um, but I don't want to be holding on to any of the hair here. So I'm just I'm just sturdying the hook here. I'm going to take the thread and pull it toward me and back to my, uh, it's to my right, so it's toward the vise, to spin that hair in place. I'll take a few turns coming forward through those butt ends. You can see I'll stand up as I go, like so. And then I'll close my fingers and kind of find the hook eye in there. And you can peel all that hair back. So it's all 360 around the hook. Let me give you a, a front view here. And then we'll do one more bunch. So I'm going to take another clump, like-sized bunch. Clean it out. Now this bunch we don't need to stack because we're not going to use the tips. So I'm just going to use the butt ends of this hair. And I'm going to fold all this hair back that's on the hook. And my thread is hanging right at the front edge there. I'm going to put the middle of this bunch of hair right up against that. And then I'll repeat that process. So one turn, and you can crease it just a bit just to make a, a notch there. Two turns, crease a little tighter, get the third turn around. And then again, hold on to your hook and spin that hair. You can see that didn't spin quite so willingly. Um, I kind of pushed it around with the thread. You can sort of manually distribute that. That's one of the catches. There we go. With the down eye hook, is sometimes it'll catch on the hook eye. We'll spin that second bunch in place. Now I'm going to fold all that hair back and just work my thread to right up behind the hook eye here. And a short length of thread from your bobbin is probably the easiest way to do that. And I'll come in with my whip finisher, hold that hair back out of place, and just sneak a whip finish in there behind the hook eye. Tighten that thread down, come in and just nick that thread out of there. And now we're going to trim the head. Um, so again, because I tie right-handed, or I'm sorry, I tie left-handed, but I am right-handed. Um, I'm going to use the razor blade that I'm going to use for this. I'm going to use in my right hand. So I'm going to take the fly out of the vise. 
And what I want to do, I wouldn't typically do this up on top of the, of the vise, but what I want to do is kind of use the hook eye as a guide to sort of start to build or shape a cone at the front of the fly. And with a, a good sharp double-edged razor blade, this is actually pretty easy. Once you get your initial cut in there, you can kind of just follow it around, make a giant mess. I should have warned you to get the vacuum out because you will need it. And now I'm just rounding off the corners and you can see I'll just use the blade to kind of knock the, the last of the, the butt ends out leaving just the tips for the collar. And I have to admit when I'm doing a lot of these I can get these cut and trimmed a lot more quickly. Um, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I haven't tied a muddler in a long time, and this was the first one. I didn't warm up, um, so I'm pretty happy so far. This is going going all right. Um, I'm not unsatisfied with the way this has come out so far. Um, and I'll tell you the reason it's coming out good is because while I haven't tied one for a while, um, back in the day I used to tie a lot of these. You know, I'm just old enough to um, have tied a lot of these old school flies and just young enough to sort of be... Uh, hopefully still relevant on the uh, on the new school stuff. Alright, so you can kind of see our overall cone shape there on the head. Um, now I'll come in with my scissors, a little bit finer tip pair of scissors, and I'll try to show you how I do this. But I can sort of hold the tips down out of the way and come in and trim out um, any remaining butts that that need to go. Oh, there's a bunch on this side. We'll get these all just sort of nicked out of here. Um, and honestly, you know, for a, a fishing fly that you're not trying to impress your friends or put on Instagram, um, I could have stopped trimming several minutes ago. Um, the fish don't care that these butt ends are, are still kind of blended into the collar, but um, but I do, and, uh, and maybe you should too, um, you know. You guys know me by now, My, uh, if you're going to do it, do it right. So I try to stick to that. Oh, one weird, there we go. Get that guy out of there. Oh, I'm much happier now. Kind of get our wing reshaped. And there, yeah, look pretty good. Um, that is our muddler minnow. Um, like I say, kind of an old school fly, you know, um, originally intended as a sculpin. Um, and you can see where, uh, you know, that's got a lot of influence on the, on the patterns you see today um, with the deer hair head and, and sort of wide, um, wide profile. Uh, you know, so many of the, of the streamers we fish today um, have obvious lineage back to uh, flies like this. And this is a you know, an old fly, I think from the 20s, I think is when this is from, Don Gapen um, in Michigan, if I'm remembering right, don't hold me to that, but I think that's right, um, is who came up with this fly, and uh, it's a it's a cool little bug, um, and not one that many people can tie, so um, if you want extra clout on the gram, um, tie a fly nobody else can tie, see how you do with that, um, become a more well-rounded tire. Um, that's that's saying something these days. You don't see a lot of that, and um, I just love doing stuff like that. It's, you know, part of that's because I'm an old guy, um, and uh, the other part of that is because these old flies that nobody's fishing are now new flies, and the fish haven't seen them before either. So, um, pretty cool little version. Uh, but that's a mother minnow. I'm pretty happy with the way that one came out. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope I didn't talk too much. Um, kind of gave you the general idea of how to twist one of those up. It takes a little bit of practice, but um, you know you got that tool in your toolbox when you're all said and done, which is which is worth worth doing. So um, I appreciate you guys watching. You guys take care. I'm Charlie Craven.